Are you okay? Hey, look at me. Are you okay? Get it off. Why are you putting the bags back on? We should just camp right here. Uh, I'm gonna try to make it to that shelter. The, uh, the whatever that is, the Rishishi, you know, it's like 17 kilometers. But you said you couldn't even see. I, I haven't been able to see for an hour, but I don't know, I don't know what shape my foot's gonna be in tomorrow. Cause I can set up camp. I know, but I don't know what shape my foot's gonna be in tomorrow. And if we can at least ride there, we'll be somewhere. I'm just gonna take it slow. <laughs> Put the camera away. Right. right here. Oh, I think the fact that we rolled in here as late as we did, looking like we did, man, they just uh, rolled out the red carpet for us. We arrived at Lodge Cordillera shortly before 10 p.m. and well below freezing. Perfecto. Muchas gracias. To find the couple who ran the establishment, guiding us in with a spotlight. Did your knee get banged up? They hurriedly prepared us some food and lit a fire, the only source of heat for the entire lodge. I had slammed my right knee on something upon impact, but Chad's right foot was much worse off. You did it. Oh. Oh. Insane. Did it. God. I don't think it was what we were trying to do. <laughs> I didn't want to do it. <laughs> Your knee and my foot, huh? Oh. After a cold and largely sleepless night, we did our best to survey our surroundings and formulate a plan. Hey, what are you, what are you thinking? Where's your head? Uh, well, I seem to get my boots on. If I can get my boot on, I can ride. Well, we tried that about an hour ago and that didn't go so well, so maybe... Uh, yeah, I've got coffee in me. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I mean, I can walk, I can put weight on my foot. Uh, as long as we stare at that sand, I think I can ride. Despite knowing his foot was fractured, Chad declined the offer to be driven back to Uyuni for medical aid. I mean, I would stay here another day. This place is a ice box. Yeah, it's, it's just freezing. Freezing in here. Figuring if he could just manage to get what was left of his boot on, he could ride. Okay. Put the 
them in the sun definitely helped. Yeah? Yeah, when I tried to put them on this morning, they were too cold. That wasn't nearly as bad. Oh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's either that or riding flip-flops. I could ride probably. <laughs> <laughs> After a few point-and-shoot directions from the caretakers, we tentatively set off. Muchas gracias. Away from the hellish sands surrounding Laguna Colorada. Go. Toward Laguna Salada and the Termas de Polques. Typically, tourists such as ourselves explore the remote reaches of Eduardo Avaroa one of two ways. Most commonly, on a guided two to three day circuit from Uyuni. Or, for those of us who choose to tempt fate on our own, as the scenic route to or from San Pedro de Atacama. However, for reasons we won't get into now, we could not cross the border into Chile, if for no other reason than to refuel. So our foray into the park would have to be a round trip that was limited by our fuel range, which would unfortunately prevent us from exploring either Laguna Verde or Laguna Blanca nestled in the southernmost tip of Bolivia. Here's another completely inaccurate map, courtesy of Google. After crashing somewhere along the shores of Laguna Colorada, we cursed, clawed, and fought our way to Lodge Cordillera. From there, Laguna Salada, the hot springs, and hopefully more shelter. But first, we would have to find it. Oh. 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 Ascending through the Altiplano and navigating a series of roads servicing local geothermal plants, we topped out once again at over 16,000 feet, 4,900 meters, before spotting Laguna Salada in the distance and the telltale procession of 4x4s, hauling their clients from point A to point B. Starting to warm your hands up on my grips. Feels so good. <laughs> Guided tours are the lifeblood for what few lodges dot the region. And as we would soon discover, they are not provisioned for moto hobos such as ourselves. 
The tour operators create the menus, provide the food and drinks for their groups. The lodges themselves provide only the staff and facilities. This, as it turns out, is no minor detail. Having relied on the fact that the restaurants actually sold food, we failed to pack more than snacks and our typical emergency rations. Oh, Rosie scored gas. What was that, five liters? Way to go, babe. But the lodges had no food to sell us. We were, however, welcome to feast on the leftovers of the organized tour groups. True dirtbagging at its finest. The healing volcanic waters of Bolivia. They're doing me right. After soaking our bruised and broken pieces and another night well below freezing. <laughs> What's up, mama? Yeah, if you want heat, you gotta go cook. There's only heat in the kitchen, that's it. You should turn the camera onto yourself. What? What's so funny? We woke to discover we had been descended upon by the sunrise over the hot springs crowd, and even the breakfast included with our stay would have to wait until the organized groups had been fed. Clearly, unless you're within a group, you're a second-class citizen. <laughs> <laughs> I could eat dinner on this. Oh, I'm gonna have to thaw my gear out in the sun. Don't crack it. But after a bit of help from one of the staff, you gonna help us pack? We were packed up and back on the bike, just in time for the thaw. So after warming up, and a bit of fine tuning. Yeah, got that one back in. <laughs> we made the decision to cut our losses and flee the Laguna's route while we still could. Both broken and hungry, we set off across the barren highlands through rocks, sand, and hordes of tour operators. eventually stumbling across a series of freshly minted tracks to what was supposed to be the alternate route back to San Cristobal and fuel. But our alternate route would soon take us back to the unmapped junction we stumbled across two days prior. So we might not even be on the road I think we're on. We might be heading back towards that uh, entry station. almost as if we had ridden directly into an episode of the Twilight Zone, back to the ranger station that did not exist. We weren't even supposed to end up back over here. I have no idea how the f we got here. Gracias, chao. Right, chao. Can I stay up here? 
It wasn't until trading messages with Andy and Ryder 6355, a moto guide operating in Uyuni. We would discover that we had been on the alternate route all along, but after assuring us that maps and GPS tracks for the region are all garbage, and that it took him three years as a guide to learn the area. We didn't feel nearly as bad. And despite not being where we originally intended, at least now we had a reasonable idea of where we were. And more importantly, how to get back to the highway. That is, if we could only survive the miles of washboard. Finally reunited with the buttery smooth tarmac of Highway 701, we arrived in San Cristobal in anticipation of topping off the tank, only to discover we were not out of the woods yet. What do you say? From what I gather, there's some sort of protests and they've got roadblocks set up. And they're like not letting any trucks through or he said with the motorcycle we can get through. But we're not going to get through anywhere without gas. Well, then why don't we use the Rotopack? If we use the Rotopack, we could probably make it. You know, good thing you bought those five liters. <laughs> yeah. There was no fuel to be had. Due to a protest that had shut down the highway mere moments after we had passed through on our way south. But fortunately, as is common, those protesting had no beef with us and were more than happy to let us through after a brief conversation and a show of solidarity. Hello, hello. Hey. 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 Hey, protest. Protesta? Por qué? Por qué? Okay. Okay. <laughs> 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 Ahora, eh, se entraron a nuestro territorio. Serio? O, o, otra comunidad se entró a nuestro territorio. Ya, ya, ya. Y quieren explotar el mineral. Oh, oh claro. Claro, está mal, pero está en nuestro territorio. Claro, claro. claro. Entonces, ¿Y, no, no respetan. ¿Y cuánto, cuánto tiempo? ¿Protesta? 
Ya, ya como cuatro días ya. ¿Cuatro días ahora? Sí. sí. Oh, ¿en serio? Sí. Oh. No, no quieren aflojar, están duros. Muy fuerte, sí, muy fuerte. Sí, sí. Muy fuerte. Ya. ¿Tengo una foto? Sí. Por favor. No, no. <laughs> Fully versed in the intricacies of territorial mineral rights, we had just one more roadblock to clear. Another hundred or so trucks to pass, and a quick conversation with some Argentinian riders who were a man down. Sí, un tornado, onda tornado, negro. Sí, sí, claro, claro. Sí. Con, con Argentina, placa de Argentina. Placa de Argentina. Sí, sí. Before finally making it back to Uyuni, where we finally topped off the tank. I never thought I'd be glad to be back in Uyuni. <laughs> The bike made it on fumes and so did we. Yeah. We haven't eaten since yesterday. <sighs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's an 18 liter tank and we just got 17 liters in it, so. And topped off our bellies at the Llama Cafe. <sighs> Holy <laughs> man, what a, what a few days that was. <laughs> I feel like we just got back from war. <laughs> so do I. I feel like I got shot. <laughs> oh, no. Oh my god. A bit more worse for wear, no doubt, but alive and happy. Some would contend that things didn't go according to plan. But since we really didn't have a plan to begin with. It's hard to complain. I mean, we're we're above 14,000 feet. There's no heat here. It's just like I feel my soul slowly leaving my body. You had a soul? <laughs> I sold mine a long time ago. You still have one? What's left of it? <laughs> 